Okay, uh, this is a quick video to try to uh, um, explain uh, w one of the causes why uh, batteries catch on fire. The, uh, these pictures and videos, is uh, they are from my buddy Marilyn Fish out of Seattle. Um, he noticed at a 100% charge, uh, when the uh, charger was showing fully charged, uh, he saw that um, the app showed 85%. So then he checked the voltage and found out it was at 96 volts. So then he knows there's a problem somewhere. Um, so being a responsible guy, he uh, uh, went further to find the problem. Now, as you can see, this part here, he's showing that the uh, pack is fully sealed. There's no damage to the pack uh, from the outside. There's no water ingress. There's no condensation inside when he opens it up. The next one then is the, uh, what you call it, the BMSs. He's showing BMS uh, condition. And then he will show the cells. Uh, when you see the cells, you will see the damaged group of cells. And that is not from water corrosion. That is actually uh, from the cells having leaked because of a bad BMS. The BMS was, um, there is a, uh, to make it simple, the BMS gets stuck on a certain group of cells and then um, it causes discharge and charge on the, that group of cells which causes them to leak and if you don't catch it in time then what's going to happen uh, you're going to have a fire uh, i don't want to argue the fact that well this shouldn't happen you know what it does fucking happen there's no point arguing the fact we are in a hobby these guys are being made elsewhere uh, not using the same standards that we uh, are used to here so there's no point arguing that fact that we shouldn't worry about it. Uh, you should worry about it because if you value your house, your health and safety, you should worry about it. And as a responsible person, there's certain things you can do to avoid this. Well, you can't avoid this, but at least you can catch it in time. Uh, and all it takes is a couple of butt connectors and a voltmeter. And your own due diligence every time. Uh, you know, if you worried about it, the, 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 I suppose the uh, easiest way I can explain this is uh, check the voltage at the charger uh, port at uh, fully charged. You check the voltage there to see uh, what it reads. And do you do this once a week, once a month, uh, once a year? Uh, how long does it really take you to check it? Less than a minute. Uh, and I would do it every time. Um, it, uh, all you need to do is once it's fully charged, it's used two butt connectors. You don't want to put the voltmeter probes inside your charger port. You're going to short things. So you buy two I believe the red butt connectors uh, you put on pin one and pin five, pin one being positive, pin five being negative. Um, you put them uh, on those pins so you cannot, they don't short. And then you put your probe inside the butt connector and you read the voltage at fully charged. If it is reading 100.8, then obviously everything is great and dandy. But if it is reading something way off, uh, you know, 96 uh, volt, 98 volts, or any real um, big difference from 100.8, then you want to uh, check uh, further. And what you would have to do is open up your wheel, check the voltage of each pack individually. If one pack is reading uh, 100.8 and the other one is uh, reading 99 volts or 98, 96, 94, any of that, then obviously you would address that pack and you would have to open it up 
and check for any damages. Mostly if the problem is from the BMS that it gets stuck on a certain group of cells, uh, you will see that uh, corrosion mark uh, on those cells. What can you do at that time? Me personally, if I see something like that, I'm not going to use the BMS and obviously I'm not going to use those cells. If I want to sleep uh, without worrying at night, I just uh, do away with that pack and get another pack. And now, obviously, depending on how many miles you've got on the wheel, the good pack that you may have in your system, do you want to mix that with a brand new pack? If you've got... You know, if you've got a thousand miles on it, probably, yes, it's fine. But if you've got something like 5,000 miles on that pack, do you want to mix it with a brand new pack? Uh, I pers personally wouldn't, but, you know, I, I'm not here to tell you what to do. Um, so I suppose what have we learned from this apart from me cussing? Um, I don't know. Uh, I think what I've learned is check the voltage at the charger port. I know your chargers have a volt display on it or your wheel has. I don't trust any of that stuff. I have a very good voltmeter. It doesn't take me but a minute once the wheel is fully charged. Two baud connectors on pin and one and five. Check it for uh, voltage, see if I'm at 100.8. I mean, eventually, you know, the, the, they will drop, but, uh, uh, you know, if it is a, a relatively new wheel and suddenly it is reading 99 volts, 98 volts, then I would address it. And I explained the easiest way to address it. Now, once you've found the problem, uh, then you can decide what to do. Uh, that I'm not going to get into. I, for me personally, if I get to that issue, I'm going to buy two new packs if it's an RS. I'll buy three packs if it's an EXN. And I'll buy four packs if it's a, a Monster Pro. I'm not going to mix and match. Uh, but once you've found the problem, at least you, you may be able to stop uh your wheel catching on fire eventually inside your house or inside a hotel or or elsewhere um so i hope it helped if it didn't sorry about it tally ho